Your Excellency and distinguished guests, the New Zealand soldier, brave, strong, young, noble and loyal. This is the image created in our minds when we think of New Zealand's contribution to World War I. We think of the men and boys who fought bravely in one of the bloodiest wars in history. However, neglect, we have neglected a very important group of people who served us just as valiantly as our soldiers, the women. These hard yakka Kiwi women who courageously traveled to the front line. They too risked their lives for a cause they believed in. They too left behind families and they too witnessed unimaginable horrors. And what about the staunch woman who stayed home to fill the gap in the workforce as well as working tirelessly to fundraise to support New Zealand's war effort? These women were just as brave and as noble, yet they don't seem to receive the same level of acknowledgement. It is fitting that the sacrifices made by men are honoured and remembered, but it's time that women were equally honoured. We must make it just as much about her story as it is his story. New Zealand women were a key force in keeping our war effort afloat during the height of World War I. Without them, our economy would have crashed and our soldiers been left without vital supplies. At any given time during World War I, the number of New Zealand troops posted overseas or in domestic training could range between 65,000 and 100,000 men. This was over one-fifth of New Zealand's workforce at the time. And not only had we lost one-fifth of our workforce, but this large chunk of Kiwi men still required vast amounts of food and, of course, weaponry. One can of baked beans per soldier equals about 41,500 kgs of beans. To put that into perspective, that's over 10 times the combined weight of the All Black Squad. It was a lot of beans. Women who often had no experience in factory work or labour produced vital war goods and maintained farms, keeping our agricultural industry afloat. To this day, it is not known how many women stepped up into men's roles at this time, as no record was ever taken, as acknowledged by scholar Brian Easton in his paper, The Great War. But what we do know is that this work often took them away from their children who were already living without their dad. Can you imagine the courage and mental strength such an act would require? Of course, once the men returned, they wanted their jobs back and the women received no recognition for their work. Our women at home faced huge challenges and sacrifice. Ignoring this is unjust and insulting, because without them, would we as a country have made it through the war? Despite working long hours, caring for their children and tending to farms, the women at home still managed to squeeze in time for some pretty impressive charity work. With the outbreak of World War I and the departure of our New Zealand soldiers, the women at home formed women's patriotic organisations. These organisations held raffles, fates, markets, all with the main goal of fundraising for New Zealand's war effort. By the end of the war, these organisations alone had raised an exceptional five million British pounds, or 560 million 393,258 dollars in today's currency. They also produced care packages containing handmade items such as socks and underwear. A clean pair of socks was the number one way to prevent the spread of crippling diseases such as trench foot. It was a crucial contribution. And these women worked so tirelessly on these care packages that at their peak in 1916, they were sending care packages at the rate of 24,000 a month. I could only describe this as the work of saints. Yet in my history lessons and an extensive reading about Anzacs for this speech, only a cursory mention has been given of their efforts. 
we must bring their work, their stories, their perspectives into the spotlight during commemorations. Because these women achieved things we of which New Zealanders can be extremely proud. Now, if you're still unimpressed by the women's efforts during World War I, wait until you hear about this. Not all women were content with staying at home. And as they were deemed unfit for the New Zealand Expeditionary Force, they travelled to the front line to serve New Zealand in a different way. As nurses. Some 626 nurses joined the New Zealand Army Nursing Service and served in field hospitals and hospital ships, dangerously close to battle lines. They risked their own lives to save the lives of others. One unnamed soldier recounts being aboard the Marquette when it was torpedoed by Germans. He recalls all of the New Zealand nurses on board refusing to get onto lifeboats before the soldiers had been saved, resulting in the deaths of 10 Kiwi nurses. They were immensely brave and selfless, but it was the work of one Kiwi nurse in particular that illustrates how undervalued they were then and how undervalued they are now. In 1915, Nurse Etty Rout travelled to Egypt to care for New Zealand soldiers. Immediately, she recognised a problem with the number of soldiers suffering from venereal disease after visiting local brothels. Determined to improve their health, she developed a preventative kit, which was later adopted by the NZEF and given to all soldiers taking leave. However, Etty was given no recognition for what was incredibly groundbreaking work. Newspapers were in fact banned from mentioning her name. Breaking this ban would result in a 100 pound fine. So I ask, why were we so ashamed of her achievements? She was brave enough to bring sexual health into the spotlight, saving so many men from life-changing illnesses. Just because she wasn't given the recognition she deserved back in 1918 isn't an excuse for us to continue to ignore her work and the work of hundreds of New Zealand women during World War I. New Zealand's contribution to World War I was so much more than the NZEF. It was a team effort from men and women. The war was won both on the front line and on the home front. So I ask, is it fair to delete a woman's work from history because of her sex? Because at the time she was deemed unfit to wield a weapon. As if that was the only thing that she could do to show her bravery and make us proud. It's not just about his story and it's not just about her story. Anzac Day is about our story. So I propose that on this Anzac Day, as we remember the bravery and the camaraderie of the New Zealand soldier, we also remember the bravery and the camaraderie of the New Zealand woman, as a team, as equals, as they deserve. <laughs>